Hey, uh, welcome back to the, the channel. Um, I have here uh, another telescope. Now, I know I've done quite a few telescopes, I guess, uh, because of COVID, um, had an interest, but I uh, discovered uh, this type of telescope. It's called a uh, Maksudov Cassegrain, um, and it blends together the combination of the reflector telescopes that you've seen before, the, the CF-114 that I've done a review for, and then also uh, the traditional uh, telescope, the traditional refractors uh, that we see out there. And so uh, this is it right here. Um, it's quite small. This is, this is my hand, this is it. Um, it's maybe a little bit more than a foot long. And you're like, well, what can I do with a foot long telescope? Well, you can actually do a lot. So this has a 60 millimeter objective lens. So you're like, well, that seems kind of small, but just wait, you'll see the results here. Um, kind of a hint, that moon behind me, I took using this telescope. It has a 750 millimeter focal length. And you're like, 750 millimeters? Well, uh, that's almost a meter. Well, how does that fit here? This, that's almost a yard. That's, that's not quite the size here. Oh, it disappeared. Thank you, uh, green screen. Well, that has to do with what's inside. And that's what's fantastic here is this is an excellent educational product, not just a telescope, but uh, the cap here comes off and it shows how this telescope works. So if we look inside, we'll see that um, at the top, this is our objective there's a, actually objective lens right there. It refracts the light, bends the light down to a mirror. So just like the reflector telescope, bounces it back. And there's another mirror that you can kind of see the coating on right there in the front that then bounces it back through this tube and back to the eyepiece. And that's what gives you this focal length because you're going up down one, two, three times bouncing back and forth. And so it's uh, pretty uh, incredible what you're able to do with this um, tiny uh, package here. Now, I wouldn't recommend taking that cover off often. Um, in fact, uh, I would leave it on all the time, um, unless you're kind of doing what I just did there, which is demonstrating how this works. Now, if you want to see other demonstrations, there's a lot of other videos and, and websites you can go to. Uh, the nice thing about this is it fits your traditional uh, one and a quarter eyepieces. It includes a, a 20 millimeter eyepiece, and it looks a little different than other 20 mil, uh, tw uh, other eyepieces in that it doesn't have the eye cup on there. And that's there for a reason. Um, and the reason is that um, it fits uh, this uh, phone adapter that it comes with. And this phone adapter um, has uh, an adapter for the eyepiece that fits perfectly on top of this designed eyepiece. I love this design because you can't get it wrong. You line your camera up with the hole um, on the phone adapter and uh, it's perfect, ready to go. It's that simple. I've never seen a, a phone adapter quite so simple. It'll still work with the other phone adapters that are out there, uh, but this one and this eyepiece, what I found is I actually start using this other, this same eyepiece on my other telescopes. Um, and so uh, that's um, interesting too. So coming back, we have our SAR Blue uh, Max 60 telescope here. Keeps, sorry, it keeps disappearing in uh, my, my green screen. So here it is. Um, it also comes with this uh, mini tripod and you look at it and you're like, well, it's mini. Well, it's a small telescope. Uh, it has um, adapters on the, on the bottom here uh, where you can screw it into your traditional camera mounts. It also has this mini dovetail that you can mount on a dovetail mount actually. So you can use a larger tripod with it, no problem. I do like this tripod. Um, it is very uh, maneuverable, adjustable. It has uh, screws in both the altitude and azimuth direction to tighten that. Um, in addition, um, it's a single uh, mechanism control. So you loosen this and you're able to adjust the altitude and the azimuth just with one control. You tighten it back down and it won't move in either direction. Pretty fantastic that way. Uh, the telescope also has in the back here, this is your focus knob. Um, and now compared to your traditional um, like refractor that has the focus knob here, uh, you can see that you know my adjustments move it quite a lot. Um, turning this knob 
you're gonna have to turn it a lot more to get those fine focus uh, adjustments. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so the question is, you know, what can you do with this telescope? You're like, it's really small. Well, small is great. Um, it's portable. Um, because it's uh, portable, um, it can fit in a small bag like this. So uh, I actually uh, got a little card in uh, the order with, with mine that said, hey, if you um, submit a review, let us know and uh, we'll send you a free bag. And so, um, or, or they uh, give you like a, a, a small discount or something. Um, I opted for the bag and it all fits in here perfectly, um, including the little tripod. It has also um, a little divider in here that protects uh, the telescope from, from the metal tripod. So that's the telescope. Now uh, let's take a kind of a quick look at what we can do with this telescope. So uh, if we wanted to stick with um, astronomy, um, we could take pictures of the moon, as you see behind me here. Okay, it sees the moon clearly. Now, if we wanted to compare it to some of these other telescopes that uh, you might be familiar with. So again, this is about $100, okay? So let's keep that same price range. We don't want to go really too far above it. We don't really want to go too far below it. So um, I comparing it to uh, this US camel. Um, there's other ones, uh, G, uh, G Skyer, uh, uh, all these uh, 70 millimeter, 300 to 400 millimeter focal length uh, refractor telescopes. They're all pretty much uh, the same vein. And I've, I've, I've used now maybe five or six of these. Um, and uh, so far, I like this one uh, mainly because of its uh, color, but um, it, it also had pretty good lenses in it that, that came, came together. Uh, the other example that's kind of in this price range is something a little bigger. Uh, this is uh, the National Geographic carbon fiber 114 millimeter. So this one has the largest aperture and it's a reflector telescope. And all of these telescopes are uh, within uh, that $100 price point, give or take sales and different things. So I'm um, all kind of comparable there. So if we look at what these telescopes can do for us, all right, so I'm gonna take, take this down for a second. And what we're gonna look at are a comparison between them. So here are uh, the Pleiades. So the Pleiades is a group of stars, a cluster, and um, I'm gonna move out of the way a little bit. There we go. And so you can see uh, the CF114, uh, the MAX60 in the middle there, and then uh, the 70 millimeter uh, refla refract refractor telescope. And the first thing you notice is that the MAX-60 gives us the most zoomed in uh, version of these. So for a giant cluster like this, or a large cluster like this, um, that could be a disadvantage, but it's also an advantage that you can see how much more bright those stars are. And again, this has uh, the smallest aperture of any of these telescopes, which I find uh, pretty remarkable that it's able to give us uh, this bright of an image. Um, partially because we're, we're zoomed in just a little bit more. And I should state that all these were taken with the same lens, that 20 millimeter lens that it came with, and just using the cell phone and this adapter, okay? So uh, let's look at a different kind of target. So here we have uh, the Orion Nebula. And so once again, you can see that zoom factor is, is different. And so for the Orion Nebula, there's actually quite a different uh, targets around it. Um, but again, what we can see is that with the Max 60, right here, uh, it is more zoomed in. We actually have more vibrant colors that come out of it. Um, and then you can see that uh, the CF114 and the 70 millimeter refractor um, give us a kind of a more zoomed out view. And that's partially because uh, my uh, refractor has a 400 uh, millimeter focal length. And then the reflector, the CF114, has a 500 millimeter focal length. And compare that to, remember, the effective focal length here was 750 millimeters. So almost double that of what the refractor gives us. So that's going to be zoomed in a little bit. So that's a little disadvantage, but it's also advantageous if you want to bring out colors, even though uh, the uh, aperture of it is, is a little smaller. And then finally, if we look at the moon, I think this will show us the, the most difference between these three telescopes. So again, uh, the MAX-60 is there in the middle. You can see how it you know, enlarges, zooms in on, on the moon. And these are all taken at the exact same uh, resolutions. So 
uh, the image that you're seeing is the same size that you would see in all these telescopes. And you see that with the, uh, the smaller focal length of 400 millimeters, you see that the moon is smaller compared to the CF-14, which is a little bit bigger because it's 500 millimeters, but then the MAX-60 is 750, uh, really makes uh, the moon quite large. And uh, when I'm comparing them, um, I've been really impressed with this uh, Maksudov uh, Cassegrain uh, technology. Um, it makes for a much more portable telescope, and you can actually get much larger versions of these telescopes um, for, again, a, a much higher price, obviously. Uh, but the portability of this is just truly uh, remarkable to me. So if you compare it with what's also touted as a portable microscope, uh, this guy, you can see just the, the difference in, in size uh, between them, right? So quite a big difference in size and weight, uh, but you're getting, in my opinion, uh, a really quality image uh, with our Max Udov Cassegrain Max 60 telescope here from SAR Blue. Now, uh, one other thing that I'll say about this is you, uh, because it has uh, this uh, right angle adapter here, it actually uh, will create a rect image. This is also a prism in here. And that's different than what you see um, here, even though it has a, a right angle, or actually a 45 degree angle adapter. Um, it doesn't uh, completely make an erect image. So what that means is when you're looking through here and you move it left to right, up and down, uh, you're actually seeing the actual movement up when you're going up, the actual movement down. So it's not inverted, uh, which is the opposite of what you would see in a, a more traditional telescope. So some people might find that annoying. Others uh, will really like that. And where it really shines is looking at terrestrial objects. What do I mean by a terrestrial object? What if you want to look at wildlife? And uh, started looking at lots of wildlife with this telescope. It's, again, amazing. And I want to take this down just for a second and just show you. So here's a, a, a fence lizard. You can zoom in right on. This is taken about 30 or 40 feet away. And you can see just how crisp and how in focus you can get it. Um, looking at a rooftop, you can see uh, these uh, uh, Eurasian collared doves here. Um, if we look at some other examples, we can zoom in on a desert tortoise as it's feeding. Uh, you could look at um, other lizards as they're basking in the sun, and you can just see how crisp those images are. Um, even at a distance, you can capture, say, this hummingbird just sitting on a branch. Now, it's a tiny target, but it's really easy to sight in and, and, and find. And then finally, um, here's another example of a, of a lizard just basking in, in the sun. So, so that's so far a little nutshell of what this the SAR Blue Max 60 can do. Now it doesn't have a finder scope. You notice down here it has these two little sight uh, dots, kind of like you see on on a on a gun a gun sight. Um, they're usable, um, uh, but uh, makes uh, things at uh, stargazing and things a little challenging. Okay. So one of the other things that I did with this is uh, I wanted this to be this portable scope and I really love the resolution. And so uh, one of the things that I designed for it, because again, I can't have a telescope without 3D printing something. Um, so um, I took uh, these Thousand Oak uh, solar filters and I designed this uh, filter holder. And so uh, you just cut two squares, uh, one a little bit smaller than the other, use a four inch sheet. And then these are just a press fit and they're locked into place. And I'll have the design uh, files for this uh, listed in, in the description. And this just fits right on the front, just slots in just like so. And it's held in place like that. And the nice thing about this is you rotate this to bring that smaller disc um, relatively in line with the sights. And while it's in line with the sights, you can bring the sun into that disc. So you're not looking directly at the sun, but you're looking through the filter to the sun. You can see the small disc of the sun, and that about brings it in the, into focus. You have to just move the telescope just a little bit in the azimuth. So you have to just rotate it a little bit, and that brings the sun into, into view on, on the telescope. And you're like, well, why, why would I want to look at the sun? Well, the sun right now is kind of boring if I'm being honest. So sun right now periodically will have one or two sunspots. So here um, you can see sunspot, I think a point right there, there it is. That's a sunspot taken with 
this little telescope. Uh, the other thing that I really wanted it for is being able to travel set up quickly to take pictures of transits of the International Space Station. So here's an example of the International Space Station. See that, that little smudge moving across? This was my first attempt. Now, haters will hate, um, but uh, I wasn't in focus, and that was my fault. Um, I didn't have the camera in focus properly. Um, I got there a little, a little late. Um, didn't have, didn't take the test shots I should have to to make sure everything was in focus. But you can see it, and I thought it was pretty incredible. And so I'm looking forward to the next time, which was supposed to be yesterday. Uh, but here in Southern California, it was raining all day yesterday, so obviously clouds and the sun don't go well together. Uh, so. Uh, this is, uh, again, the, the SAR Blue uh, Max 60. Um, comparing it to uh, these other telescopes, I'm very impressed. Um, this has become my, my new favorite <laughs> telescope, mainly because it's so portable. And what I'm learning with astronomy is portability and quality are important because they go hand in hand. Now, I, I would think I might want something a little bigger than this. Um, so. Uh, I, I think this manufacturer is coming out with either an 80 millimeter or a 90 millimeter, which I think is kind of the sweet spot for this portable telescope. Um, there are some other manufacturers that have similar ones, and I would be interested in a, you know, seeing if those uh, would, would give me a similar portability with uh, this quality imaging. But, uh, you know, we make the best of the situation and, and COVID, uh, Kind of thrust us into uh, new realms and new worlds and uh, just wanted to share with you uh, one piece that I found that has really uh, driven my interest and uh, the greatest part about all this right this even this little telescope I can take a big SLR camera and actually fit it onto this telescope and takes pictures so um, the tripod will actually support it um, and uh, it allows for a little bit better quality than what you get with the cell phone. I don't knock the cell phone. All these other pictures you saw, minus the sun, uh, were taken with uh, the, the cell phone. Uh, this particular image behind me was taken just with uh, this uh, old uh, Canon DSLR with its stock um, 18 to 55 millimeter lens. Um, and so that's about 30 minutes of, of processing of, of data there. So just amazed what we can do with astronomy. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you learned a little bit uh, about this little telescope, um, how these other telescopes work. Again, for about $100, you can get a high quality telescope uh, to explore the night sky or to explore uh, the critters of daytime. Thanks for watching. Take care.